Hello, I'm the Commander Xander. I remember it so that a sandwich critic doesn't have to. And neither should you! Remember where I said in the Rugrats at Paris review that Willie could do any reviews that I do of reviews that he did? Well, we're doing Napoleon Dynamite. Hey, Willie, wake up! What's going on, my man? I'm reviewing Napoleon Dynamite. You fucking reviewed it, so you're coming with me for this review. Oh boy, this will be better than the Rugrats review of a man. Yeah, that's great. While you're getting yourself acquainted, uh, Napoleon Dynamite took place in 2004 and has really gotten a hit. At least I thought initially. After rewatching it again and again and again, I have concluded that this is kind of decent. But I'm still going to delve it. With the assistance of the hobo boy over there. So, let's delve into Napoleon Dynamite. Of course, credit for the movie goes to Fox Searchlight Pictures and Paramount. And no, YouTube, this is not for monetary purposes. This is strictly for a review. I don't profit off this crap. No, seriously, I don't. I like doing this for a living. And neither does Willie. He doesn't profit off of this either. So after that lovely intro, which we see both Paramount and Fox Searchlight Pictures, we get this interesting two-minute song showing everybody and who's responsible for this movie, which we don't have time for, quite frankly. So we see Napoleon riding a school bus to school. Are you sensing something wrong with this, kiddies? Hey, Willie, you see something wrong with this picture? Um, maybe the fact that Napoleon is like the only tall guy in the fucking place? Yeah, that's pretty much the case, Willie. Oh my god, he's got an action figure of the Macho Man in my man! What could he be doing with him, my man? Well, you're about to find out. He's gonna toss it over the window. If you didn't see him opening the window, that's why. Watch this. While the bus driver's not looking, he does this. Willie, I think that's about as random as what you do with your crap. Don't you agree? Oh, yes, you're my man! Poor Macho Man, or whatever the hell that action figure is. We're in school and he's drawing... Oh, goody. Not one, but two unicorns in the sky. Oh, boy. I can't wait to hear his fucking current event. Does it have something to do with a mystical creature of the dark? No, I think it's going to be something actually current to my man. Last week, Japanese scientists explos placed explosive detonators at the bottom of Lake Loch Ness. What the fuck? I'm high and I don't believe that there's a Lake Loch Ness in my mind. I'm kind of with you on this one, Willie. He kind of made this one up. As always, because it's fucking Napoleon Dynamite. What do you expect with this guy? Just tell her to come get me. Why? He then calls Kim, his brother, telling him to, like, pick him up. But that's not all he wants, him, Mama. Yeah, apparently he wants a chapstick, too. Well, have you talked to the school nurse? No, she doesn't know anything. Of course she doesn't know anything. It's a school nurse, him, Mama. It's not like your mommy. Like, what's this? Mommy, I'm I'm not feeling well, I'm I'm Why don't you go to your school nurse? Because I don't believe in them. I believe in you, I'm I'm Your mommy is in the closet, Willie? Uh, no, I'm I'm Then you're clearly high. After that wonderful conversation, Napoleon overhears the principal talking to the new kid named Pedro. Is that a new kid or something? What do you fucking think? If you think that... If you see the principal with some kid you've never seen before, I think that should fucking answer your question. Don't you think, Napoleon? This is Pedro. Would you mind showing him where his locker is? These two become sure. best friends. Freaks. Since when, Kip? You have the worst reflexes of all time. Kip is doing online dating because, quite frankly, he has nothing else to do with his poor, miserable, pathetic life. 
Hey, at least I can be productive, more productive than that, by doing reviews. Isn't that right, Willie? Oh, yes, you're my man. And me too, my man. By the way, when are you going to do another one? You haven't done one in like four months or something like that. Oh, you'll see, my man. Napoleon comes out and, hey, look, it's his girlfriend, kind of, at the door. Would you like to look like this? Oh my god! Napoleon. This is a girl. Well, no shit, Captain Obvious. For a limited time only. Glamour shot by Dan for 75% off. How do you get my hair cut at the cotton corral? Oh, really? And how much do they charge? Is it like $14, $15, $5? Of course, it's Montana, so they don't believe in this crap. Or at least I assume it's Montana. They're living in the middle of nowhere and there's like nothing going on. Meanwhile, it's Rex Kondo! Uh, you think he was made for WWE as evidenced by the uh, red starry bandana and the stars and striped pants? Oh my god, that's my fucking clothes! He stole my clothes in my mouth! Really, Willie, that's your fucking clothes? I don't think so. I don't see you wearing those pants at all. Like, at all. By the way, this is the most cheap ass edge you could think of because at the end of it, he. What, was he shaking the camera or something? Or did he get like an orgy or something? What the fuck? Can't write down the number because he's gonna go to this program. Meanwhile, Napoleon's supposed girlfriend is still at the door with bracelets. Scout camp, you nuts. She's got to give away something. Come on. So ultimately, she gives the whole thing to Napoleon. Okay, do it again. While at Rex Kwon Do land, oh, Kip shit. gets his ass handed to him, and rightfully so, because God damn it, he's a fucking asshole. Now, here comes the most violent part of the movie, which is going to scar a shit ton of kids for life. Hey, Willie, come take a look at this. This is Lyle, by the way. He doesn't really speak much, but boy, does he speak louder with actions than words. As he's about to put this cow in its place. And innocent children are scarred for life. <laughs> Let's watch that again, shall we? Wait, 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 we're watching him in that. Oh my god, him in there! Isn't that great, Willie? Oh my god, that poor cow in there! That cow was going on its last lamb. He deserved to fucking get put out like that. Seriously. This transitions to the most annoying song in this fucking movie. As part of the Happy Hands Club, we have to hear some say love you easy or whatever the hell that stupid song is, but I'm going to type that bullshit. Oh, by the way, guess who shows up? Uncle fucking Rico. With the whimsical arm. I'm dead serious. Watch this. Watch this. So what do you think? <laughs> That's pretty cool, I guess. Pretty cool? Are you fucking nuts? He throws like a fucking whip. That's not how you throw a fucking ball. This is how you throw a fucking ball. Willie, permit me to demonstrate on you. This is how you throw a ball. Ow! Like that. Not like, like a wimp. He thought he could be quarterback. And he relives it. Oh, you take state, all right. State of whimsical! I, on the other hand, would like to go back in time just to relive my childhood. Because it was a golden era. This is pretty much the worst video ever made. I'm with Napoleon. Like, anyone can even know that. You know what, Napoleon? You can leave. Okay, yes, after that wonderful conversation... We see Napoleon drawing a liger. What is a liger, mama? What do you think, Artard? It's a lion and a tiger blended together. A liger. Get it? What's so special about a liger, mama? 
I don't know. I'm assuming it's like a tiger with a lion mane or something like that. Pedro wasn't here on this very day because he was sick. I don't know. Did you see him today? No. Then clearly he's not he's here. Not. Meanwhile, Pedro decides, I mean not Pedro, Uncle Rico decides to sell Tupperware. Kip is uh, along this gig too, and guess how stupid he is. Watch this. Dang it. You really thought the Tupperware was going to survive a tire? Good God almighty, are you pathetic. Yeah! I don't even know that's not possible in my man! Are you sure, Willie? Are you honestly sure about that? I think so, my man! Oh, and if that weren't enough, Napoleon needs to find a date to go to the prom! Guess what he does! He first has to get money in order to... get a proper suit and a proper bouquet. What job, you might ask? The Chicken Ranch! The Chicken does not want to go into the cage bars and quite frankly I don't want to blame him. Because this is ridiculous. You can imprison chickens in this concentration camp just to get their fucking eggs. Watch, he's gonna run away like a whim. Ooh, chicken! Okay, who is gonna be dumb enough to drink that fucking yolk? Oh my god, look at that yellow drink! Ew! You just drank my piss! Wick guacamole! <laughs> well, at least it tastes better than egg yolk. Of course, no one goes after the egg yolk, they just go after the sandwiches. Oh, by the way, he gets paid in change! What was that to the man? I said he gets paid in change. Change! You got change! No! I don't have change. I don't have any change. Don't you want like a crisp dollar bill? No, I prefer the change in the man. Of course, he gets his fucking suit and... Actually looks pretty decent in it. He goes to the dance. The dance date ignores her. And she spots her friends. By the way, she was forced out of her will by her mother to go out with Napoleon. She's like, yeah, I'll take you to the dance, but I'm not going to dance with you. Of course, while at said dance, Pedro comes up with the genius idea to run for president. Because he just so happened to be on his water break. Convenient enough. Hey, Willie, would you ever run for president? Oh my god, I would run for the president of hobos, my man. I could change the culture of hobos forever, my man. Exactly how are you going to change the culture of, ho of hobos? I don't know, my man. I haven't thought about it yet. Then you're not going to win the presidency.